Hello and welcome to another edition of Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. On the program today, we speak with the Managing Director and CEO of Guinness Nigeria PLC, Baker Magunda, on the sustainability strategies of the organization. Also, a chat with the General Manager, Public and Government Affairs of ExxonMobil, Miguel Kukigam, reveals efforts made by the oil and gas company to develop various sectors in Nigeria. Once again, welcome to the program. I'm Anne Wawadu. Guinness Nigeria PLC is a leading producer of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages in Nigeria. The company's products are sold through over 130 major distributors spread across Nigeria and in the United Kingdom. Let's find out more about their history. Guinness Nigeria PLC is a subsidiary of Diageo PLC of the United Kingdom and it was established in 1950 as a trading company importing Guinness Stout from Dublin. In 1962, it was incorporated with the building of a brewery in Ikeja, Lagos, which became the first Guinness operation outside the United Kingdom. Three years later, in 1965, Guinness Nigeria was listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. In 1974, the company built a second brewery in Benning City, the Edo State Capital, where it produced the Harp Lager Beer. In 1982, a fourth Guinness brewery was built in Ogba, Lagos. In 2011, the Binning and Ogba breweries were expanded to further increase capacity and meet the growing demand for Guinness Nigeria products. The company is engaged in brewing, packaging, marketing and selling of the various products. Guinness Nigeria PLC is the only total beverage alcohol company in Nigeria with a wide portfolio of brands catering to non-alcohol and alcohol drinkers with non-alcoholic beverages, spirits, lager and beers. Some of its well-known and well-respected brands include Malta Guinness, Origin Zero, Dubic Malt, Guinness Foreign Extra Stout, Guinness Nigeria PLC delivers on its sustainability and responsibility commitments, which are focused on various areas to achieve overall success. My chat with the MD CEO of Guinness Nigeria PLC, Baker Magunda, began with the various initiatives that help implement programs. We've got an agenda through which we run uh, the programs that we run in the country. They're basically, uh, you know, broken down into three pillars. But all of them are intended to support environment, yeah, support diversity, which we shall talk about later. And of course, um, alcohol in society, we always want to lead um, the conversation around the role of alcohol in society. Those really are the three big things that drive this. Now, two of the SDGs speak about diversity, and that's gender diversity and reduce inequalities. Tell us how Guinness Nigeria implements initiatives in these areas. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, there's enough evidence that um, organizations that promote um, diversity and inclusion tend to do better. Uh, for us at Guinness Nigeria, as you might have seen, we've got possibly the best balanced board of directors in Nigeria. We've got about 40% of our board is made up of female and the balance are male. My leadership organization at Guinness Nigeria is 50-50, 50 male and 50 female. Um, but we also have got a program across the organization where females come together and talk about everything. But uh, diversity for us is just not about gender. We've got also a promotion of divergent views. Um, ethnicity is still a law spoken about um, fact in Nigeria, but it still you know, exists. So in all the decisions we make, we need to make sure that we continue balancing you know, people with divergent views um, on things in society. So we started a program where we are testing it in a few states um, to enable females to come into organized businesses through some of the non-alcoholic brands that we have. So your organization has worked with various farmers, thousands of them, and even empowered many of them. What exactly are these projects that you do for these farmers and how much have they benefited from your several initiatives? So I think your question on the project we've been doing with farmers is one of the most exciting things that bring us to work every day. Yes, you're right. We've been working with thousands of farmers across the country, who we call small-scale farmers. 
to achieve a couple of things. One is we want to move uh, these farmers from being small scale subsistence farmers into proper commercialization. And to do that, we've supported them with a range of initiatives, everything from inputs, extension services, enabling them to access funding, insurance, what that does. And of course, we provide them with a stable market, you know, which we negotiate once a year, and they are confident that everything they grow, we shall buy at a good price. So, so far, we've turned over almost 27,000 small-scale farmers into the project that we're doing across the country. A year or two ago, we launched something we call, you know, Growing Together. Um, what that does is um, it has pushed us to buy almost everything we now use in our production process uh, to be uh, bought locally from Nigeria. Let's talk about the health sector now. You seem to take eye care very seriously. Tell us why. We wanted to intervene and do something about it in Nigeria. So that's the reason we invested in the two projects, one in Lagos and the other in Onicha, which has been around for a very, very long time. But we've been working with other NGOs as well um, to ensure that we help eye correction to those who cannot afford this service. COVID-19 also gave us an opportunity to contribute in a different way. When the crisis broke, so we turned over our investment budget and some of the investment platforms that we use to advertise the brands in supporting the CDC to pass out the message. We worked with NGOs that were sending palliatives to communities that were most impacted. Um, we've so far given out about 100 million naira worth of food um, in some of these communities. People are struggling because they've been out of jobs, they've been at home, so they still need help. We also looked at those people who sell the final bottle to the consumers, the bartenders. They tend to be forgotten in all of these conversations. So when the bars close, the restaurants close, these young men and women went home and they have families to feed as well. So we thought, how do we help? And we started a program which we call Raise the Bar in which we ask all consumers, just tell us the bartender who you would like to send help to and we will do this. So we had a very quick um, response in millions of you know, votes and uh, we had care packages uh, that we were sending out to bartenders who had been nominated by their own consumers. From undergraduate scholarship schemes to helping people with technical skills, tell us how much investment you have made in this area. So on education, as you know, it's again, education is a very important enabler for people to fulfill their full potential. Um, and in Nigeria, we need it, you know, continue to scale our people, especially in sciences and technology. Across the country, um, other than the universities with whom we've been working on some of these programs, we've also been, you know, training up with some of the federal agencies um, across the country like IIT to ensure that, you know, we uh, participate in tooling up people. Uh, through intense training um, that young people need to prepare themselves for a very competitive workspace, as you know. Yeah. Now, for some organizations, reducing the environmental footprints is a huge challenge. For some, they don't even care if they pollute the environment or not. Tell us what Guinness Nigeria is doing to ensure the environment is safe for your consumers and even for your host communities. Our mother company, announced $120 million investment across Africa for renewable energy. And Nigeria is one of the beneficiaries of those. As we speak this morning, the new equipment is actually going in to move away from what we call dirty energy sources to clean energy. The second thing we're doing as well is ensure that the impact of our packaging does not harm the environment. So at the moment, we've started by cleaning up, you know, packaging like PET, and we've cleaned up with other producers, you know, who, who do that. There is a big push at the moment in recycling water. In the brewery in Lagos, the water we put back in the environment is cleaner than the water we get out. So we're really, really proud about that. But also, 83% of all the water we use in our production process in Lagos and Benin is recycled you know, for cleaning the floors, cleaning the, the machines. So we don't waste water and we have very, very strict measures that we follow on how many liters of water we use to produce a liter of beer. So that's on uh, what we do internally. But we are also um, investing in um, some of the communities that, you know, are really um, stressed of water to ensure that, you know, we help to protect the environment. Uh, to make sure that there is continued you know, access to, to clean water for some of those you know, um, communities. The final thing I would say is that, which I'm very proud about, is that you might have seen John Walker is one of our global brands and is the first global brand to announce that you know, we're going to be launching 
John Walker bottle, which is made out of paper. It's one of the things we're doing to move some of our key brands into recyclable and reusable packaging as well. And soon we will be launching a John Walker whose bottle you will not tell, but is <laughs> made, made out of paper. So we are really making some you know, progress. Each one of us at home start by doing the right thing, separate the rubbish. That all alone helps those people who are driving, you know, recycling and cleaning our environment. I think the final point in this is carbon footprint. It's um, something, again, we measure. How much carbon are we putting out in the air? So you have various campaigns targeted at telling people how to drink responsibly. How much has this done in terms of impacting the lives of people that you hope to target? Responsible drinking is uh, one of our big campaigns. We've got a lot of stuff we've been doing. Um, I think the first one, which has been around for a long time, is um, the partnership with the Federal Road Safety um, Authority. We've been working with them to drive a campaign to teach people that drinking and driving do not mix, especially the commercial drivers. And um, through that program, we've touched thousands of drivers. We also put money into putting out awareness billboards and all. The production that you see on all our labels, we also, you know, um, amplify the fact that, you know, excessive consumption is, is not good for your health. We have a program which, again, very exciting program where we are targeting underage use of alcohol. And this program we started by testing it in Lagos, um, where we are targeting uh, young people between 13 and 18 and, and talking to them about the harm of you know, underage use of alcohol. And um, the final thing we do as well, we, we've got a portal which is an online, you know, um, um, an online portal for learning which we call Drink IQ, and it's both for our internal audience, for all our partners, anybody who would like to learn how to use alcohol responsibly. And then there's a final project we are doing, the retailers as well, and we are testing it in 500 outlets at the moment, before COVID came in. To partner with retailers to say, as a responsible retailer, you should know when somebody has had enough and you should be able to say to him, I cannot serve you anymore. You assumed this position in 2018. Before then, you had held several positions in other African countries. Tell me, is this, has it been different working in Nigeria? It is very different and exciting. It's the only country I've worked in twice. Um, I've worked in Nigeria before, at Guinness Nigeria, um, in the early 2000s, in the marketing department. So clearly, um, I made a point of go away, prepare yourself and come back as the MD. So I, I feel excited that I've been given an opportunity to come back and continue de leading this organization. I've got a group of very, very uh, professional uh, teammates on our team. We're trying to create a new culture around here. So we are in the midst of change, uh, calling each other by first name, uh, pushing the whole agenda I spoke to on diversity and inclusion. Um, encouraging young people to compete for senior jobs. We have a very young team at the moment. And of course, you know, uh, helping everything we can do uh, to give voice uh, to legislation in areas um, that we think we've got the expertise to do so. So I feel privileged. I am excited to be here. And I hope um, the owners of the business will find me um, doing a good job and, you know, uh, let me stay around for much longer. So thanks for asking the question. So talking about business now, how do you hope to continue impacting more lives as you do business in Nigeria and around the globe? We have to um, continue, you know, delivering results that make stakeholders happy to leave their investment in this business. We've got a lot of, you know, almost 28,000 people who are invested in Guinness Nigeria shares. That is really, really important. It's what gives us the license to continue doing what we're doing. I think the second thing which I committed to the organization when this whole crisis started is that together we will make sure that none of us lose their jobs because of this crisis. And so far we've been good on, on that promise. We're also contributing in a small way in exporting some of the products that we make to the US, to Canada, to, to Britain. What that does is in a small way contributing to you know, forex revenue for the country. I think the final thing is in, in the area of uh, governance. You know, we are very proud that uh, possibly we are unmatched in the standards to which we hold ourselves on governance, accountability, and reporting. So it's that that has made us possibly the longest surviving, you know, business on the Nigeria Stock Exchange. We went on the Stock Exchange in 1965. We've never left. We've been there since.